chief executive of the campaign group, the Centre for Countering Digital Hate, and he says there are a number of groups and individuals concerned at these developments. As do so many other people, including uh, advocacy groups for black communities, for Jewish communities, for Muslims, uh, the public health profession who are worried about people like anti-vaxxers who super spread disinformation in order to make profit for themselves. And also, most heartbreakingly, human rights communities all over the world, including in repressive states, where they know that by letting back on dangerous people who spread hate and disinformation, it may put their lives at risk. Look, I, I think Twitter is already seeing an exodus of advertisers in part by because of the work of my organization in a coalition of charities from the US, the UK, saying that they want to have change uh, and they want advertisers to make sure that the platform is held to its normal community standards. But I think you're also going to see legislators around the world because this is that, that classic sort of, you know, that classic um, dilemma. What happens if a mad or bad person takes over a nation state, a democracy, a major platform that has democratic impact around the world? And actually, I think they're being put to the test right now. In fact, the EU's already passed that test to an extent. Today, Twitter's head of EU policy had to sort of bend the knee to the EU's chief on digital harms and say, we will abide by your laws. The UK could have laws, but it has been held up because of the sort of problems this summer with the government. Yeah. And in the US, we're seeing new legislation being introduced. I think this may be the beginning of the end of, of this era of unregulated social media. But, but